So this is our measurement chart that you can download from our website and we're going to show you how best to take your measurements. So this is our Bart who's going to be having his measurements taken and this is Iko who's going to be doing the measuring. So the first one on the measurement chart is number one. Uh, number one is the height from the shoulder to the knee. So Iko's just going to move Bart around as she needs him to be. He's going to stand nice and straight. Okay. So number two is the length of the garment that's being ordered. So Heiko's going to measure from the shoulder down to a relevant point on the body for the period of the garment that's being bought. Number three on the chart is from the shoulder to the true waist. The true waist is the soft bit just below the rib cage. Number four is the chest width between the arms. Now you can see where the crease is naturally forming on Bart's clothing. So what we want to make sure is that there's room for the chest and it's not pinching on the sleeve. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the arm measurements, which are quite critical, particularly in later medieval garments. Um, we use the full length of the arm combined with a combination of the neck to shoulder, shoulder to elbow and elbow to wrist. So we're going to ask Bart which is his dominant arm, okay, and we'll ask him to bend his arm so that it's halfway up his chest in front of him. Okay, for using this measurement, it's really critical that we use the correct part of the shoulder joint. So we use the top of the shoulder joint where it meets the clavicle. So here we can see Ico measuring the full arm. So it goes around the back of the arm, around the elbow, and down to the wrist. 24. Okay. Moving straight on from number 5, 8, 9, and 10 are the component parts of the arm which make up this measurement. So Ico is going to measure from neck to shoulder joint. 12. Okay. And then from the same point down to the elbow. 33. And from that elbow joint down to the wrist. Now these three, these three measurements should add up to the total of number 5. Okay, so 5A and 5B are used for some earlier period garments and for certain male items. So we're going to measure from the armpit to the wrist on a straight arm. Asking the customer to hold the tape measure can be helpful. 46. Okay, and also from the armpit to just above where the elbow bend is. 20. Okay. And so 6 and 7 are head height and collar height. So we'll ask the customer to put his hand flat on the top of his head and we'll measure from his shoulder up to his hand. 27. Okay, and his collar height will depend to a degree on the period of the garment, but we can measure from the from the shoulder up to where he wants his Eight. collar. Eleven and twelve are head circumference and neck circumference. Okay. And the neck circumference should be taken slightly lower than you would normally do for a modern shirt. So moving on from here, the other set of arm measurements that we need are the circumferences, starting with the armpit circumference. So we'll ask the customer to bend his arm in front of him as he did before. And move it up so we make sure we encompass that top of that shoulder joint. Uh, we're looking for a comfortable fit, not too baggy, not too loose, not too tight. Okay, the next one down is the bicep. So the customer is going to tense his bicep muscle for us. 43. And his elbow, while he's got his arm bent, measure it around the point of the elbow, thus allowing room for movement. 39. And the forearm muscle. So the customer turns his arm around to make sure the muscle's fully expanded. 34. So 17 and 18 on the measurement chart are the wrist and hand. 19. Okay, and the hand is measured with the hand flat around the largest part of the thumb joint. 26. So now we come to the body circumference measurements and we're going to ask the customer to turn around for COVID safety and we're going to measure the chest. So the first chest measurement is taken up under the armpits and we're going to ask him to tense the trap muscles at the back so we've got full expansion there. And the second one slightly lower and we'll ask him to do a full chest expansion. So from number 20 to 22 are waist measurements. So the first one, if we remember where our true waist is, at the bottom of the rib cage. The next one is what we call jeans waist. And if you're wearing a buckle or anything, try to avoid measuring over the top of your buckle. 106. And the last one is hips, which is taken around the largest part of the gluteus maximus. 119. And finally, 22 and 23 on the back, so from the shoulder down to the true waist. 43. And the final one is the back width, similar to the way we did the front chest width. We're looking for 41. There we go. Um, and that concludes the first half of the measurement chart, everything that you should need for an upper body garment.